Welcome back to Inside the Middle East, coming to you this month from Lebanon. We're now in Jumeze. This is one of the trendiest neighborhoods in Beirut these days. And right here is one of the Lebanese capital's oldest cafes. It's known as the Glass Cafe, and it's been in existence for almost 80 years. It was established in the late 30s. And every night, except Tuesdays, we're told, they play live music here. Let's go in and have a listen. Here they play classic Arab songs on the traditional guitar-like instrument, the oud. Well, one musician used his oud not only as a form of musical expression, but as a way to send political messages. Through Lebanon's darkest time to this day, the music of Marcel Khalifi plays on. He's a masterful Lebanese musician, but also aims for the heart, often singing songs that celebrate a mixture of human emotions, from love to Arab nationalism to despair in the face of injustice. One of his most famous songs is Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish's Rita and the Rifle, set to music. Between Rita and my eyes, there is a rifle. And whoever knows Rita kneels and prays to the divinity in those honey-colored eyes. The story of a Palestinian man separated from his Jewish lover. A master of the oud, the traditional eastern string instrument, Khalifa insists he's an artist, not an activist, but admits art can stir political sensitivities. I sat down with him before one of his concerts in Washington, D.C. I deliver music, and when this music reaches its listeners, it sometimes becomes political and it touches them deep inside their humanity. Khalifa has the 1970s. When his songs rung true to the Lebanese people during the dark days of the Civil War. Internationally, Khalifa is mainly known within small Arab expat circles. But back in Lebanon, he's a national icon. His loyal fans certainly seem moved during his concerts, mouthing every word to his songs with fervor. It's Marcel Khalifa. He is probably the best Arab singer there is today. He's really great. Uh, um, you know, he uh, fires up the crowd. I'm so excited that he's in D.C. and performing, and I just think it's a great opportunity to see him and get excited for his music. At a Beirut news conference to promote his concert tour, Khalifa still attracts throngs of reporters. Always poetic, even with journalists, Khalifa explains his love for his country. I do not know what draws me to this magnificent and wild city the city of eternal strife. Perhaps it is the intellectual desire to light a candle and damn the darkness. We walked with Khalifa in the Lebanese town of Amchit, where he was born in 1950. He says he feels a true connection to this land and the sea that surrounds it. In the street, a fan stops and praises him. But Lebanon hasn't always been a welcoming place for Marcel Khalifi. Twice he was accused of blasphemy for using a verse from the Quran in one of his songs. After two very public trials, he was eventually cleared. But on tour in America with their father, his two sons told me the trials took their toll on the entire family. You feel attacked by the same way yourself, you know, because it's your father. So I felt ashamed of being uh, Lebanese at that period of this country. I was really uh, upset. 
recent years, touring for Marcel Khalife has become a family affair. Rami is a Juilliard graduate pianist and an accomplished solo artist. Brother Bashar plays percussion. Their mother sometimes sings with them on stage. Whether he likes it or not, today, almost as much as in the 1970s, Marcel Khalifa's performances take on a political meaning. The war in Iraq and occupation of Palestinian territories, Khalifa says, are only two examples of all that's gone wrong on this earth. And his solution to help the world live in peace? Ship leaders off to an island and let the poets govern the world.